friends. Uh, guess what? I'm starting a podcast, Pasture Experience, inspired by Psalm 23. Uh, this podcast has come out of the seasonal gatherings and the weekend retreats that I hold and facilitate in our Tennessee home. Um, what is Pasture Experience, you ask? Well, I founded Pasture, uh, which is inspired by Psalm 23, as this intimate listening experience where women gather for the purpose of deep connection and soul nourishment in my living room environment. And so my hope is that this pastor experience, uh, this podcast will, will offer you just that, is your own experience to listen and be honest with yourself, to come to know the Trinity in a really intimate ways, uh, and join soul nourishing conversations wherever you are on your spiritual journey, um, on your specific pasture. And so here we're going to bridge the beauty between play and contemplation and pasture experience podcast will be sort of like soul care met spiritual direction met this deep whimsy conversation all tethered and connected and rooted in Psalm 23. Um, for those of you who are maybe new to the term soul care or spiritual direction, I think the best way that I could describe this is um, Spiritual direction is this co-companioning, co-journeying with you wherever you are in your spiritual journey. The questions that you're asking, the um, stirrings that you're experiencing, the ways that you're um, hearing and listening to um, Jesus and the Spirit and the Father in maybe out-of-the-box ways. And so um, I'm just honored to get to co-journey with you. And that's really what I want this whole experience to be is, is one that is yours, that you feel known, you feel heard, um, you feel a deeper awareness of, of God alive in you as you journey um, in your day-to-day. -day. Um, so that's my hope and my prayer for this podcast um, with Pasture Experience. Um, and I'd love to share with you how Pasture Experience came to be. Um, when we felt a stirring to move from California to Tennessee two years ago, I met uh, this really whimsy soul. Her name is Kim, and she owns the city farmhouse in Franklin. And at the time she had this whimsy venue at the factory and um, she sold her, you know, found treasures that she, you know, her and her hubby found when they went exploring. And, um, and, um, and then she had this, just this beautiful venue where she would create these um, spaces and events. And so she invited me to come and share a little bit about my heart, about authenticity, um, especially in the social media world. Um, and so something magical happened that night because 20 women showed up. Um, the youngest was probably around 18 and then the oldest soul was in her early seventies. And we gathered at this long farmhouse table and there was uh, wine and nibbles and just in this beautiful environment. And we just talked about matters of the heart, um, authenticity. What does that look like to live out faith in the everyday? We talked, we had questions, we listened to one another, we connected, and um, it was just this really beautiful evening. And I came home and I just felt this sense inside of me of what was that and how can, how can I experience that more? Um, and so from there, this, this idea of pasture started stirring in my spirit. Um, and it was something that I know that God had put there even the year before, um, but the, the whole, the beautiful part about pasture is this, this imagery that it brings to mind of this, um, level green field where, um, it's full of these, um, nooks and these valleys, but there's not this hierarchy. It's not this mountain. It's, it's this, it's this safe environment where we all kind of come and we coexist, but we're, we're individually journeying our own path, um, among one another. And, um, and that is exactly what pasture experience is inviting you into is how are you experiencing your own pasture journey? And so that's where this idea of pasture kind of came to be. And, and so I just thought, how can I do that again? How can I offer these experiences where there's connection and there's beauty and there's honesty? Um, and we're having these faith conversations about our spiritual journeys, but it's not necessarily tethered to a church or a Bible study, but it's it's inviting Jesus and it's almost bringing church outside of the walls. It's inviting him into our living rooms. It's inviting him on our porches. It's, um, it's offering sanctuary. It's offering pasture, um, these experiences in, in ways out, just outside of the church. And so I just started praying about what would this look like to offer this experience in the, in my community? And 
I mean, women just came out of the woodworks just saying, I don't know what, what, um, what God's stirring, but I want to be a part of it. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about this journey is that when, um, God puts something on our hearts. Um, and I know that he's putting things on your heart. Um, the beauty of stepping into obedience without, without even maybe having a plan or, um, a five point itinerary, uh, which is new for me. Um, but when people come along and they say, I want to support this, I want to, I want to um, be champion this, um, the beauty of what that looks like. Um, and so women came out of the woodwork and I was talking to uh, my dear friend, Rebecca, who owns, the antique mall in our town in Spring Hill, Tennessee. And I just asked her one day, I said, have you ever thought about holding an experience here? And she just looked right at me and she said, I don't know what you're talking about, but I, what would, you know, I want to make, I want to make that happen. So whatever you need, you may use this antique mall as your space. And so for, um, for a fall season, we held pasture experience in this antique mall and women came from the community and we, opened up this beautiful space, which is this antique mall that is held in an old gym. And um, there was beauty and uh, safety and this longing just to have honest, authentic conversations and invite all of us to really just carve out space and listen to ourselves, share our stories, um, encourage vulnerability, and talk about how how Jesus is, is inviting us into that um, in, in, in a different context. And so it was a joy to hold these pasture experiences for um, the fall season. And then I really just felt called to pause for a bit. Um, about that time, uh, a dear friend of mine, Kelly, invited me to, um, uh, she was offering up her home to um, host for a spiritual direction cohort. Um, so this training, this a couple year training to become a spiritual director. And I I just knew that when I thought about that idea, I felt so drawn to it and alive with that and so I, I was stepping into this, this training program, this, this um, schooling to become a spiritual director and really just felt a, a draw to pause and just listen and figure out if that, that's something that I wanted to continue holding in the mall and so, in the antique mall. And so I just really got quiet for a season. And um, one day we were at cohort with a small group of us um, and I found myself talking about pasture and just feeling so alive about the need um, to have those safe spaces to wrestle and confess and share openly and be messy um, and know that God is is doing a deeper work in that. But but where do we find those spaces? And um, and I know that that is in the context of of offering up a pasture experience. And so I found myself crying, saying, "I know that I I want to." I, I want to do this, but I, I suddenly feel like um, just this need to intentionally shrink the room even more. Um, at that time, we were having about 65 women coming to um, the pasture experiences, and I, and I just felt like, gosh, that's so beautiful, but I didn't want it to become another event. I think so often um, we have events where people can easily, you know, come in the back and sit in the um, sit in the back row and not engage, and you can come and you can listen, but but you don't leave feeling known. And my heartbeat really is that by shrinking um, these experiences, that women can come and sit in a circle and look in one another's eyes and be listened to and be heard without feeling like they needed to be fixed, Um, that they could bring the matters of their heart in a safe context. Um, And we could wrestle and we could journey and hear one another, where, where are you most resonating with your pasture experience, you know, where, where does God have you in your own journey? Um, and, and leave feeling known and, and like there was an experience instead of this being an event. And so I just really began like listening to that and, and praying about that. And, um, I paused for a whole year and I knew, I knew when the time had come that I, that I realized I want to offer these experiences in my living room and I want to keep it at no more than 12, women. Um, and this podcast is for men too, cause it's about, you know, soul nourishment and, and our journeys and, um, honest conversations. But I knew that those experiences, I wanted to be intimate because I believe that's where healing truly begins is when we can say, I want you to know all of me and watch you not walk away. I want you to hear my heart and know that I, that I'm, 
I don't need to be fixed. I don't need a, um, a verse tagged on the end. I don't need a bow. I just need to be offered a safe space to be heard and listened to and to really invite us to do that hard work of listening to ourselves first, talking with that, um, with Jesus and then going to people last. And so I prayed about that. And I just realized that, um, I really do believe that that small is sacred and that something beautiful happens in um, a safe, intimate group um, where healing and being known can happen um, in the context of Psalm 23. And so I sort of shifted that vision from the antique mall um, into our living room and began holding local gatherings for those that are in Tennessee um, in the fall and in the spring. And then I had people reaching out saying, I want a soul care time, but I'm in Texas or I'm in um, Missouri. Um, would you do a weekend retreat? And so I thought, oh my gosh, I'd love to. So I had our first um, soul care weekend retreat um, last April in our home. And I had women come and fly in from all over. And it was just this really beautiful space of uh, inviting inviting us to listen, you know, sort of turn that that, lift, that listening and that talking um, upside down and we gathered and we connected and there was wine and we're in our living room and there's wildflowers and my boys are helping set the table and um, my husband was cooking all these um, incredible meals and um, it was just a weekend intentionally carved out to listen to ourselves get in that rhythm of listening to to what God's saying and then listen to one another's stories um we had a time of confession. We had a time of celebration. Um, we had space to just go and be and recharge. And something in me just, I just realized I want to offer this um, all the time. And so um, amazingly enough, it brings us to this moment right now because one of the um, one of the souls that was at the weekend retreat called me recently um, and, and side note, when we gather, um, one of my values for pasture is that we don't talk about what we do. Um, we really do a lot of the interior listening. We, we focus in on the heart and it's so easy to focus on our circumstances and, you know, our jobs and our roles. But I really try to invite us to, um, you know, one of our values is we don't talk about our jobs or what we do. And so she called out of the blue and said, um, Becca, I came home from that weekend feeling so alive and um, experiencing God in such out-of-the-box, unique ways. Um, and she was telling her boss, who, unbeknownst to me, is a media producer, and he said, I don't know what Becca needs, but I want to sew in her, so into her ministry, and so would you offer her, could we gift her a podcast? And so, you guys, I'm here, so humbled, but... Um, just so honored that I get to meet with you wherever you are. If you're, if you're driving, if you're on a walk, if you're, um, if you're sitting in a hospital bed recovering, um, that, that this literally has been gifted, um, to me and it is my joy to just turn it around and offer it at, back to you as a gift. Um, I think it's really beautiful when God sees our heart and he funnels us into um, who he wants us to be so that he ultimately gets the glory. And this is one of those moments. Um, and so I am recording this in a, um, a studio that was gifted by Bema Media Studios, which is just south of Nashville. Um, and their amazing staff has just been um, such a gift. And so I, I humbly say thank you. And um, I think it's just one of the most beautiful parts of this story. And so this podcast is a gift, um, and it's my joy to offer it back to you as a gift. Gift. Um, and so, what can you expect with listening to Pasture Experience podcast? Um, you know, why would you want to um, join us here? And and here's really my heartbeat. My heartbeat is to take the um, the culture that we have right now, the culture that we um, we talk at one another and we listen last. And I want to take that and I want to turn that upside down. Um, I'm a bit of a, a status quo shaker upper, if you will. And so um, a lot of my journey has been one of desperately needing a safe space to wrestle and process and listen. And I think that unless we intentionally um, make time for that, um, it's so much easier to um, listen to other people first. 
And I think that there's um, incredible voices out there um, from pastors and influencers and speakers. But but really my, um, my challenge and my encouragement and my invitation offering to you is um, – to, to gift yourself the permission to listen to yourself first, to listen to yourself, because in listening to yourself, you then get to talk with um, God about that, um, about all the matters that are stirring up in your heart. And then the confidence that he tethers in you, um, the ways that he speaks and he meets you, the ways that you will experience his presence and his protection and his provision in your journey, um, that will tether you um, in a way that, that no matter who says what, um, you will be unshakable because you know his voice and you've done the hard work of really listening and staying and, um, and listening, you know, first for yourself. And then when you go to people, um, they're like the cherry on top because, um, we get to go to enjoy them and be in community and share soul nourishing conversations and encourage one another. Um, but my heartbeat and my prayer really is to, to turn that, um, that idea upside down. So we first come to listen and then we, um, th- we do the talking and we listening to others lastly. Um, and so the way that I'm going to set up these, these podcasts, this is sort of our, our trailer, our intro, if you will. Um, and then the next episode will be, um, this listening offering that you and I will be having a conversation. Um, but a lot of this is going to be me asking, you questions and just offering you sometimes space, sometimes quiet, um, to really do a lot of that pondering and processing on your own. Um, you know, having conversations with God, listening to him, um, offering yourself quiet. Um, and then the next episode will lead up to, um, a conversation with somebody that, uh, I'm inspired by in their journey that has to do with the episode before. So, that's sort of how I'm going to set up these times that we're going to listen first, pay attention to what's going on inside of us, and then I'll invite us to join at this um, soul nourishing conversation with um, a guest that that I've invited on, which I cannot wait to introduce you to some of the people that we have. They are incredible and have life experience, and ironically, so many of them, when we had conversations shared about um, their experience um, with experiencing peace and hearing God's voice, the majority of that came in the hardships and in the stillness and in the unknowns. Um, and I just think there's a hunger that so many of us have, so many of us have to, um, know him and experience hope glimmers. And we're looking for those conversations. And so my hope is that you will find that here, um, in this space. Um, so, and then at the end of every, every podcast, I'm going to close us just by reading Psalm 23 over us, just really inviting you to pay attention and notice where you most resonate in your own journey, um, knowing our pasture is going to change constantly. You know, um, I think it's no accident that when David wrote this prayer, he, um, you know, talks about like how God makes us lie down and then he leads us beside still waters. And there's, um, you know, and there's a part where we're all at the dark valley, um, but ultimately God is inviting us to the banquet table with him um, to know mercy and to dwell in his home forever. And so I will just be ending that time with us um, reading Psalms 23. Um, I'll ask questions. If you are a um, journaler, I invite you to maybe get a journal and, you know, write down some of these nuggets. Or if you're in the carpool line, um, maybe write a quick note on your phone just to kind of go back and pay attention to later. But Really, this is your space. This is um, this is um, something that I'm inviting you into, but we're going to journey together. And so I invite you to let it be what it feels most congruent, most organic for, for your um, processing. Um, and then um, we'll just continue that rhythm, that listening and then conversations and then listening and conversations. So um, how can you find out about this? Um, I would invite you to subscribe to Pasture Experience Podcast wherever, um, via whatever um, podcast app you are most um, comfortable with. Um, You can also find it on uh, my website, which is pastureexperience.com. And you can also find out where the local and the weekend retreat, um, those are as well in Tennessee. And then um, you can also go to my website at beccapoke.com 
But again, I just, if you resonate with any of these conversations or the topics that we're talking about, um, I invite you to share it with people um, that you love. And again, I I know your time is so precious. And so really, if, if you hear anything in this in this podcast experience, it's, I just really want to invite you to listen to yourself because God's already speaking to you and it's probably in completely out of the box ways. And um, there's nothing like this confidence that comes when we really tether ourselves and know him um, and are unswayed, um, even when circumstances um, would say otherwise. So that is that is my heartbeat for you. And I, I'm just so excited to get to journey with you. I would love to um, close our time before I read Psalm 23 um, with one of my favorite quotes um, by Madeline Lee Engle, her book, Walking on Water. Um, it's amazing. So she says, in a very real sense, not one of us is qualified, but it seems that God continually chooses the most unqualified to do his work, to bear his glory. If we are qualified, we tend to think that we have done the job ourselves. If we are forced to accept our evident lack of qualification, then there's no danger that we will confuse God's work with our own or God's glory with our own. And that is my heartbeat is that as we journey this together, we'll realize that he does all things and it's nothing that we need to do on our own. And then in closing, I just invite you wherever you are today, just to maybe just to start paying attention, kind of get in the rhythm that we're going to be um, by listening to Psalms 23 as I read this over you. Notice where you resonate. Notice where the shepherd is is meeting you. Um, notice where your heart kind of comes alive at, at hearing these verses. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green pastures. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for joining us. Um, grace and space to you today, friends.